to share your word with your people. You have called us to the work of evangelization, and this is one of the opportunities that you have presented to us to do exactly that. We ask you that may your Holy Spirit descend upon us so that we may do it your way and not our way. Bless us, continue blessing our congregation, and we ask you also that you may bless this studio as they uh, continue with the work of evangelization. And as we prepare for the Feast of St. Francis, prepare us in a very special way and make us like Francis himself. All this we ask of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for us. St. Francis and Claire, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and, and of, of the, the Son, and, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that uh, powerful prayer, sister. And on the same breath, I ask you to introduce yourself. Who are you? Which is this congregation that is in studio today? Karibu. Thank you very much, Sister Esther. I am Sister Margaret Lydia, a Franciscan sister of St. Joseph. I am one of the regional superiors of this congregation. In our congregation, we are five regional superiors, and I'm one of them. I'm a regional superior of Nairobi region. Okay. And I come from Homa Bay Diocese. Okay. I was born and raised in Homa Bay. Um, I come from a family of 13 and I'm number five in the house. Wow, we are five you. boys and eight girls. Congratulations, sister. Thank you very much. That's a big family like my family. You are welcome to Captain Studio. And then you, ha you are accompanied by sister. Maybe she also introduces herself. Thank you very much, sister Esther. Yeah. I am sister Josephine Paul Nyambeda mm -hmm. Apio. I belong to the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph, commonly known as Asumbi Sisters. Yes. I was born in Siaya County. Mm -hmm. I was raised in Nairobi. I've spent much time living in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome, sister. So, dear viewer, we have two great women in the studio, Sister Margaret and Sister Josephine, those are the things we shall add as the conversation continues. So welcome to the studio and as you know, uh, this program basically looks at the works that are done by the religious congregation and maybe people would wish to know who are the Asumbi sisters and why Asumbi sisters or oh, St. Joseph, who are you, Sister Margaret? Uh, the Asumbi sisters are a diocesan congregation found in Homer Bay Diocese. Mm -hmm. uh, this congregation uh, was founded by Father Philip Skeffer and six other sisters who are the pillars of this congregation. Mm -hmm. And we were founded in 1936. So Father Kefa was a Franciscan? Or? No, no. Father Philip Skeffer was a Mill Hill priest. Okay. Yeah, he came for missionary work. Mm -hmm. And then finally um, found a place, was offered a place at Asumbi, mm -hmm. where he finally settled. Mm -hmm. And going by his commitment to preaching the word of God, uh, many girls were attracted to his life. Mm -hmm. And actually they went to ask to be priests like him. Mm -hmm. But he's the one who now gave direction mm -hmm. that they don't become priests but they become sisters. Okay. Then through Father Skeffer, he, of, he <coughs> organized and brought the Mill Hill missionaries mm -hmm. to form these young girls who are very much interested in okay. religious life. Okay. Yes. I think if I'm not wrong, you are the first congregation that I'm interviewing that was started from Kenya, which is good. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Sister Josephine, yes. this congregation has a charism mm -hmm. that drives Mm -hmm. Your congregation, maybe for the sake of the viewer, could you tell us the charism of your congregation? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. The charism of the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph is joyful love and compassion mm -hmm. to all people of God. Mm -hmm. It's guided by a vision to bring or create a dignified society mm -hmm. of God's people, mm -hmm. and particularly to women, children, and the vulnerable. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, sisters. Uh, any founder who begins a congregation, there is a push, and that's maybe it is what is the, the, the push that made Father Philip to start the congregation of the 
uh, Asumbi sisters. For example, my congregation, there was a push for the need for the women of that time. Maybe what made, apart from being followed by girls, what made him so the need to begin a congregation? I'm sure there were other congregations that time. Father Philip, maybe that drives the congregation. Okay. Um, he saw the need of starting a congregation um, because at that time at Asumbi, there was no other congregation where he could direct them to. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and as they came to, to, to him, um, we learned from Father Skefa mm -hmm. that he was also interested in Franciscan spirituality. Okay. And he took this as an opportunity mm -hmm. now to bring this into a reality. Yes. So that's why he even invited the Franciscan missionaries mm -hmm. to come and start this. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Sister. Before you became a sister, Sister Josephine, yes. you were like a little girl moving from Siaya to Nairobi to eventually deciding to become a sister. What is your vocation journey? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I said uh, when I began introducing myself, I was born in Siaya mm -hmm. County, but I was raised in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. My father was working in Nairobi. My mother also was working in Nairobi as a businesswoman. Okay. And so I attended my catechism class. We lived in Eastlands. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. And I went to Our East Lady. Eastlando, they say. Yeah, Eastlando, yeah. 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 Uh, mm -hmm. So I went to Our Lady of Visitation Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And while I went there, uh, that's where my parents went and our family went to. And while I was there, I started catechism classes, and I was taught by the Sisters of Mercy, okay. very good sisters, and they were teaching us the Word of God. And so this inspired me a lot. I said, when I grow up, like any other person will say, when I grow up, I'll also teach the Word of God. Wow. And so that has always carried me until today, mm -hmm. even though I'm seated now, mm -hmm. I'm asking myself, am I teaching the Word of God? Mm -hmm. I was so much encouraged with the way the Sisters of Mercy were teaching us catechism. Mm -hmm. We went to church, we were in the Legion of Mary, and other activities in the church. Mm -hmm. And any time I went to Our Lady of Visitation Catholic Church, I sat next to a sister. I already felt that I'm a sister. Oh. And so that inspired me a lot. Mm -hmm. So when I, I did my primary school, class 8, at St. John's Primary School in Nairobi, still in Kaloleni, mm -hmm. Eastlands, I told my father, I want to go to the sister's school. And so my father also was very lucky. Mm -hmm. His younger sister was a sister, oh. a Franciscan sister of St. Joseph, Sister Mary Paul. Okay. But I did not approach Sister Mary Paul because I found her to be so holy, mm -hmm. so clean. And many times I said, if I tell her I want to become a sister, she might tell you, cheeky girl, what yeah. do you want? Yeah. So I decided to tell my father mm -hmm. that I want to become a sister and I want to go to a sister's school. So through Sister Mary Paul, I was able to go to St. Anne's Sega Girls Secondary School, mm -hmm. run by the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph. Okay. And there I felt comfortable. Wow. I, I was happy that I was in a school where the sisters were. Mm -hmm. And that is my vocation journey. Okay. So from there, I joined other girls also who wanted to become sisters. And we were in a group of young girls, dedicated girls, mm. who wanted to become sisters. Okay. And so it was immediately after my senior four, I went to join the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph. Sister, there is a notion that the children brought up in town really become sisters or religious <laughs> men. And you, look at you, you are from that kind of environment and you decided to become a sister. What can you say to that girl or boy who is watching us and maybe because of the environment, what an I feels <laughs> like maybe I can't make it. What um, can you tell I will them? say that yeah. a vocation is a vocation. Yeah. When, God's, when God calls you, he will fetch you wherever you are. Sure. That is one thing. Mm -hmm. Two, as being born in a Christian Catholic family, and I expressed my desire when I saw the sisters, mm -hmm. and I always wanted to teach the word of God. This did not... Staying in Nairobi, living in Nairobi, did not deter me from wanting to fulfill my heart's desire. Mm -hmm. And so after going to Our Lady of Visitation Catholic Church, 
Later on, a new parish was created, mm -hmm. St. Joseph's Shauri Moyo. Mm -hmm. And you know that Shauri, we call it Shauri yeah. Ololo. Mimi ni mstana wa Ololo. So <laughs> yeah. I went to St. Joseph mm -hmm. uh, Catholic Parish. And uh, there I was in the youth group. I was in the choir. I was among the first youth members of that parish. Mm -hmm. That was late in the 1980s, mm -hmm. eh? okay. 89 going to 90. Okay. And so even there, I still, I felt, even amongst the youth, there is nothing I didn't do. We went for youth activities. We went for volleyballs. We went for uh, music. Mm -hmm. We also had parties. But I still knew I wanted to become a sister. Sure. Even when I went to secondary school, during holidays, I came back to Nairobi. I went to the youth mm -hmm. activities. I attended the youth activities in the parish mm -hmm. until when I finished senior four. Okay. Then I decided to go. Even my friends, I meet them today. They are big women. Some mm -hmm. of them are chairpersons in the parish wow. at St. Joseph Shaurimoyo. Mm -hmm. And when I go there, they are very proud. They say, this was one of us. Wow. She's one of those mm -hmm. who are the pioneers of this parish. Okay. Yes. Thank and you And so, so when much. God calls... Yeah. It doesn't matter where you are. Thank you, Sister mm -hmm. Josephine. If God needs you, he will snatch you from where you are. At Autoke Ololo, he will take you from there. Sister Margaret, yes. you also have a journey. Yes. Uh, from You didn't just become a sister. Yes. There is that journey. How did it happen? Maybe you could have decided... I want to be a great woman in this nature, nation, not necessarily uh, joining religious life. It is very interesting that as we are here, the two of us, yes. she has an auntie who is a sister in the same congregation. Mm -hmm. I also had one, may she rest in peace. Wow. She finally died. Oh. But um, my vocation was influenced right from where I come from, mm -hmm. Home Bay. Uh, at home, mm -hmm. we used to pray every day. Mm -hmm. After supper, mm -hmm. we would meet as a family mm -hmm. and pray. My parents made sure that that was the last thing we did before we went to bed. Before we went to bed. We went Hold to bed. there, sister. Yes. We are coming back. Yes. Dear viewer, it is getting sweet, hotter. The conversation is getting good. Do not go away. We are going for a short break. And when we come back, we continue with our conversation in the studio is sisters from the sisters, Franciscan sisters of St. Joseph, rather called Asumbi sisters, with thy sister Esther Muturi. This is Missions of Hope do not go away. Capuchin TV and forward ever, backward never. So move ahead, ahead, ahead. Endelea kutazama Kapuchin TV. Kitambulisho katoliki. Synodio prayer. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partially influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. We ask these of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Capuchin TV. Ni bara canta capua mungu. Weli, weli ni mara. Weli ni bara canta capua mungu. Weli, weli ni mara. Endelea kutazama Capuchin TV. Kitambulisho Katoliki Welcome back, dear.
dear viewer, we are still on. And as we before we went for a short break, Sister Margaret was sharing her vocation journey. Please, Sister, continue. Yes, I had yeah. said that yeah. at home, uh, we prayed every day. Mm -hmm. In the evening as a family, we met for the rosary and we met for the evening prayers. Mm -hmm. And then we slept in my stepmom's house. Uh, my stepmother woke up at dawn and she started prayers from her bedroom in the morning. And she made sure that she said the prayers very loudly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in other words, she was waking us up. Yeah. So we could not afford to sleep. We wake up, we pray with her, mm -hmm. is when we go for our duties. Okay. And I realized that I, as a young girl, I loved prayers and I loved singing. Mm -hmm. So then it so happened that um, my auntie was a sister in the same congregation. May she rest in peace, she died. Mm -hmm. She took me to a boarding school at class three. Oh. Mirogi girls. Okay. So while I was there, it is a school that was headed by one of the sisters of the same congregation. Mm -hmm. um, this sister also encouraged us to pray a lot. We went for masses every day. And then she taught us that Angelus is prayed three times, mm -hmm. in the morning, at midday, and in the mm -hmm. evening. Mm -hmm. At midday, as we came out of class for lunch, a few of us ran to the church mm -hmm. and prayed the Angelus, is when we came back for our lunch. Mm -hmm. And that practice remained in me. In the morning, she would wake up, clap her hands, and signal us to go to church. Wow. We went to church. Mm -hmm. In the church, I was very keen to look at our catechist, the way he was leading prayers. He was a blind man, and he was praying very nicely. Mm -hmm. I used to enjoy the way he was um, leading the rosary. Mm -hmm. He used to do his head like this <laughs> as he led prayers, and with a <laughs> nice voice. Okay. That attracted me. I used to mm -hmm. kneel behind him, mm -hmm. and I was like this mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. So then I ended up being confirmed in that same school, Mirogi. Mm -hmm. But when I came back home, Every Sunday, we walked through the main parish, Asumbi. It took us one hour and 20 minutes to get to Asumbi uh, for mass. Every, wow, every Sunday. Sunday. Wow. And as I go to Asumbi, you would find when the first mass was going on, and then we sit at the veranda waiting for the second mass to, to begin. That is the mass that I attended. Mm -hmm. As I was seated along the veranda, I would hear the sisters singing in, from their chapel, mm -hmm. and they are praying. All these things attracted me. Mm. And then as I entered the church, the choir did so well. They sang so well. Mm. All the songs that they were singing mm. remained with me as I would be walking back home. I was yes. just humming. Like yeah. there's one I believe in the language mm. that they sang. Mm. I remained humming these songs mm -hmm. as I'm going back home, a joyful girl, mm -hmm. every Sunday. All these things influenced my vocation. Mm -hmm. When I went to secondary school, I was also taken to a Catholic school, mm -hmm. headed by the Notre Dame sisters. Mm -hmm. In secondary school, I coined a small group that we used to pray with every evening mm -hmm. after classes. We would go and kneel behind the laboratory or behind some building, just praying. One day, our principal found us praying. And when she discovered that we were doing that, mm -hmm. she would give me the key to their chapel. Wow. So at mm -hmm. that time, when we are ready, we go to their chapel and we pray. Even when they were not in, they would mm -hmm. just leave for me the key. Wow. And we would pray. Mm -hmm. I was an active girl in the church. I was leading prayers. I was participating in readings and all these things remained with me. So when I finished my Form 4, mm -hmm. I was called to a Protestant high school for five, from 5 and 6. Okay. When I went there, I took just one term. I told my auntie, I am not going back to that school. One, I don't like the way they pray. Mm. Number two, I don't like the way the girls behave. Mm. Please get for me 
a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. I was transferred. I was taken to St. Albert, Sulanda. Mm -hmm. There I ended up becoming a church prefect. Mm -hmm. I was a choir mistress. I used to sing all the time. Mm -hmm. So finally, when I finished my Form 6, I wanted to join. I attended the seminar for the sisters, and our vocation mistress, Sister John Bosco, told me, Sister, when you started, you went to a boarding school in primary school. You were under protection. Mm. Secondary school, you were under protection. Mm. High school, you were under protection. Mm. I want you to go and live in a place where you are alone, and we see if you are really interested in, in religious life. So they asked mm -hmm. me, as a Form 6 leaver, mm -hmm. look for a school, you go and teach us an untrained teacher. Okay. So they even helped me to get a school. I went to St. Teresa's, uh, St. Uh, Lucy's Radua, mm -hmm. where I taught for one year. Mm -hmm. They were testing my vocation. Mm -hmm. And for me, I told myself, I want to go to a place where I can pray and sing. Mm -hmm. So even at Radua, I was very active in the church. Mm -hmm. And I, I joined mm -hmm. from Radua. Then I joined this religious congregation. Look at that. Yes. They tested you. You proved them. Yes. yes. I, this is my decision. I want to join yes. religious life. And here you are as a religious, not only a religious, but a leader. Mm. Kumbe leadership has followed you all through. So, Sister uh, Josephine, you are now a... Uh, as an Asumbi sister, you have joined, you have seen what they do, and this program is Missions of Hope. And the idea is to just tell our people what we do, religious, those missions that we carry out that offer hope to the society. Maybe you could highlight some of them, as Sister uh, Margaret also prepared to add something that you have not mentioned, maybe. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as This program is called Missions of Hope. Yeah. And us as a congregation, Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph, our mission is also to give hope to the people. Yeah. So we do a lot of apostolates. First, we have education, mm -hmm. where sisters are involved in teaching from different levels. Yeah. We also have health care. We have sisters who are doctors, they are nurses, some are lab technicians, anything that pertains uh, medical health care. Mm. We also have pastoral programs and in these pastoral programs we have catechists, we have sisters who just go to the schools to give um, pastoral instruction mm -hmm. to students and uh, also just working in the parish in different activities, youth ministry, mm -hmm. we involve in youth ministry. We also have social work, sisters who go out there to meet people and listen to their problems, take care of their social needs. And uh, we also have prison apostolate, mm -hmm. sisters who work in the prison, particularly with those who are in prison, mm -hmm. both uh, men and women who are in prison. Mm -hmm. And um, in, it, actually in that apostolate, it's very intriguing. Eh? Mm. And uh, because you not know, somebody will be wondering why should a sister go and work in the in prisons. The prison. yeah. uh, okay. And so it's not it's something very rare mm -hmm. and we also have administrators we have schools we have secretaries we have accountants at all levels mm -hmm. yes sister margaret more on the on on the uh, apostolates that you carry out uh, first and foremost i mm -hmm. want to say that our first apostolate is prayer yeah <laughs> and uh, it is through yes, prayer yes, that we we <laughs> give hope to the people we yeah. pray for the marginalized we yeah. pray for the poor, we pray for all these people who are in need, sure. and so we give hope to them. Mm -hmm. Number two, we uh, do our carry out our apostolate within the communities where we live. Mm -hmm. There are sisters who are just appointed to take care of our own sisters within the community. You remain in the house serving the others as they have gone for active apostolate mm -hmm. outside there so that when they come back, they find the house warm. Mm -hmm. There are also some sickly sisters mm -hmm. whom we take care of mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we work among the physically and mentally challenged people, mm -hmm. giving them hope. You know, these are people that their parents do not want to identify with. Actually, most of these parents I uh, hide them in the houses. Mm -hmm. But when we discover them, we bring them to our institutions and we give them hope by training them to do some, carry out some projects mm -hmm. so then they live to know that they are also worthwhile mm -hmm. and that there's something that they can 
offer. Mm -hmm. um, we work among the children. We train the children, mm -hmm. and we make them people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I am a teacher by profession. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm working among the marginalized Maasai. I interact with a lot of poor families. Mm -hmm. There are many students who come to our school who cannot afford their fees. But I don't treat them like an ordinary principal. Yeah. Sometimes when I send them home and they come back without anything, I tell them go to class. Mm -hmm. And I, I give them an opportunity mm -hmm. to go through the system and finish form four. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, uh, do this, you, will be, you are the light of your family. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you get some, some good grade that will make you change the state of your home. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of that. There are so many students that I sponsor in our school. Okay. Yeah, those who have no sponsors. Okay. Other than that, as a community, mm. we normally visit the poor homes like uh, during Lenten period, we fast and we take our Lenten fast to poor families. We mm. just sit with them, we share with them, and we give them something. Mm -hmm. Other than that, even Christmas, we invite children, mm -hmm. so many children, mm -hmm. uh, in the Masaini, okay. and we share them, we encourage them. Okay, sister, uh, yes. that, that's yeah. beautiful. Maybe yes. you have uh, a beautiful success story of some of these children that uh, you have seen them move from one point to another mm -hmm. as a, a result of the assistance that they were given by the Franciscan sisters of St. Joseph. They are very many. Yeah, they are, they are, they are But very there is many. that one that has really touched you. It has not gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you keep remembering that child. Mm -hmm. That child, really, sisters, yes. really did something to that family. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are many. Actually, mm -hmm. there is a girl, that one now not in Masailand, because mm -hmm. in Masailand I've not stayed for so long. Yeah. But there is one particular one at Sega mm -hmm. who was a total orphan. She did not have means at all, and her siblings also could not yeah. uh, afford to, to, to take her to school. Mm. So the brother talked with me mm -hmm. to bring her to school. Mm -hmm. And you know, like he was asking me, offer this girl something, I will see what to do later. Yeah. I didn't know he was handing over to me the responsibility. Total. Total. Wow. As I went with that girl, I, I, imagine I carried her uh, from Nairobi to the school. Mm -hmm. I gave her everything literally mm -hmm. all the shopping the mattress the beddings everything mm. and i settled down in school so when i followed up with the brother is when i realized that these people are not going to give me anything mm -hmm. i took eunice bonyo as my daughter mm -hmm. and i educated her from form one up to form four mm -hmm. that girl was very bright mm -hmm. anyway she finally completed with a b plus wow. the girl went to the university right now she works with the geothermal Wow. Yes, and That's she's a, a very renowned <laughs> person yeah. uh, in, the, in the society. And there are many others. Sister, yes. thank you so much. Allow me to, to ask, because this most of the, when we talk about the Maasai, uh, is, uh, we know they don't uh, value education as such unless the trajectory is changing mm. nowadays. Mm. How do you go about encouraging the parents or the children to see the need to be in school? Personally, I do a lot of talking to the girls. Mm -hmm. um, I create forum uh, in the school mm -hmm. where I can talk to them. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I bring uh, many speakers, mm -hmm. including enlightened Maasai, mm -hmm. particularly women mm -hmm. who have made it in life. Mm -hmm. uh, they come, mm -hmm. they talk to the girls, they inspire them, and they tell them, that we know what you are going through. We also pass through the same. Yeah. So just uh, this is the only tool you can use to change your situation. Mm -hmm. So many of them are getting inspired. Okay. Some of the parents are also changing their minds. Okay. Um, I normally organize for education days where I invite speakers. Mm -hmm. And the speakers really talk to pe the parents about education. So mm -hmm. some of them, for sure, are changing their attitude. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Sister Margaret. And that is what we are called to. And when we talk about offering hope, that's what we are doing. So continue watching. The conversation continues. We are now going to the last uh, break. And when we come back, we shall uh, listen to the sister Josephine side of the, of the story as far as her apostolate is concerned and her carrying out mission of, of hope to the society. Keep watching. This is Missions of Hope with our sister Esther Muturi.
Capuchin TV. And forward ever, backward never. So move ahead. Ahead, ahead. Endelea kutazama Capuchin TV. Kitambulisho katoliki. Christianity, in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and prophets. Islam, no one of you truly believes until you wish for others what you wish for yourself. Judaism, what is hateful to you do not do to your neighbor, this is the whole Torah, all the rest is commentary. Baha'i Faith Lay not on any soul a load that you would not wish to be laid upon you and desire not for anyone the things you would not desire for yourself. Buddhism Treat not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. Hinduism This is the sum of duty. Do not do to others what would cause pain if done to you. Capuchin TV Nibara canto capua mungu Weli, weli Nibara Weli, nibara canto capua mungu Weli, weli Nibara Endelea kutazama Capuchin TV Kitambulisho Katoliki Welcome back, dear viewer, to our last segment uh, on Missions of Hope. And as before the break, I said, we're going to listen to Sister Josephine. And Sister Josephine is doctor in philosophy. I know she won't say this, but I want to say that. <laughs> so that, and Sister Margaret is a doctor also. We have doctors. These brains, these people are, they have brains. So Becoming a sister does not deter you from achieving the very best level as far as academic is concerned. And so we are coming to Sister Josephine. You are also serving the people of God. Sure. And I, I know you have had opportunities that give you a chance to give hope to the society. Maybe mm -hmm. you could now tell us. As I stated before, uh, I said that I was so much influenced by the Sisters of Mercy. Yeah. And all that I saw in them was teaching the Word of God. And that encouraged me so much. So as I grew up, I said, I would also want to teach the Word of God. Sure. And so when I joined the congregation, immediately after my senior four, my brother wanted actually to take me to go and do accounts. Mm -hmm. Today I will be an accountant. Okay. But I refused. Yeah. And my brother got mad with me. Mm -hmm. And I went to the convent. You know, like, you think the convent is running it's, away. Yeah. And so That's when I went the to the... Thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was the best thing I wanted at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a twin, eh? My yeah. twin sister, we did senior four together. Okay. And so my twin sister was like, eh, you really want to become a sister? And you know, me, myself and my twin sister, She's a little bit polite. Eh? Mm -hmm. I was a little bit cheeky and mischievous. Eh? Mm -hmm. And so many people thought that, hey, we you kweli anaweza kuwa sister. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> Mwenzangu was not interested eh? mm -hmm. anyway. 
So when I joined the convent, I said I want to teach the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so my first um, apostolate, I was taken to train as a catechist, mm -hmm. which I'm proud of until today. Mm -hmm. Actually, even the community, they call me chief catechist. Wow, that's and so I trained as a catechist mm -hmm. um, at Chemi Chemi. And then I was sent to Arusha. I worked there in the diocese, mm -hmm. in the catechetical department. And then I came back. I've also served in the in our infirmary, mm -hmm. a place that I love mm -hmm. most, mm -hmm. even today. Mm -hmm. Taking care of the old sisters, the sick, and I think, not even that I think, mm -hmm. I know I'm gifted, I can really work with the elderly and mm -hmm. the sick. Mm -hmm. And so I, work in our, I worked in our infirmary for five years. Mm -hmm. uh, before my superior general, by then the late sister Pauline Mary, had actually talked with me and they taught us a congregation, I will go and do canon law. Mm -hmm. And so I was sent to the Catholic University, mm -hmm. actually to Nairobi first, to search for a place where I can do canon law. Mm -hmm. When I reached Catholic University, I was told you must do philosophy, mm -hmm. preparatory year. And so I met a priest, the late Father Quirin. Mm -hmm. I was working with him in preparation for our chapter. Mm -hmm. And he told me, sister, Instead of doing philosophy for one year, mm -hmm. why don't you go to the seminary and do philosophy for three years? Then you'll have a good background. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the Apostles of Jesus and I did my philosophy for three years. It was during that time, in my second year of philosophy, that I started looking back and saying I loved philosophy mm -hmm. and I said I must continue with this, mm -hmm. but I kept it as a secret. Okay. So when I finished my philosophy, I went back to the present Superior General who was by then Sister Margaret Aringo, mm -hmm. and I told her, Sister, I would like to continue doing philosophy. Mm -hmm. And she told me, but your record says you have to do canon law. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to do philosophy. Mm -hmm. So I was sent back to the infirmary. Mm -hmm. So I worked in the infirmary for two years again, and uh, I was given the opportunity to do my master's mm -hmm. in philosophy, and then after that I did my PhD in philosophy. Mm -hmm. In my journey of my vocation journey and in bringing hope to the people, I, as an individual, mm -hmm. have always talked to people, not only from a philosophical point of view, yeah. but bringing hope even to students who feel discouraged, mm -hmm. who feel that they have lost everything, who maybe feel, oh, sister, I can't make it. And you know, the myth that philosophy is difficult. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's a myth. It's a myth. It's not true. It's not true. Okay. And the fact that even women do not want to engage mm. in doing philosophy because it is mm. seen as a male preserve. Eh? Yeah. It's only men who do philosophy. Mm. I meet even seminarians, priests, sisters, and they ask me, you're doing philosophy. Mm. Who took you there? <laughs> you know, it's like even the priests themselves, they ask, even I have priests who are my students, yeah and my colleagues, mm -hmm. but even the students, they look at me and say, sister, you are doing philosophy. Mm. I wait to knock yeah. over. Philosophy is not difficult. Yeah. It's just like the myth we were told when we were young that mathematics is meant for men. For men yeah. And so we grew up knowing that mathematics is for men. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you the day I scored 75 in mathematics when I was in primary, mm -hmm. I knew it was not a, a male subject. Yeah. And so I give hope by bringing especially students who feel that philosophy is difficult. Mm -hmm. I bring it to their level because we are told always as a teacher, learn your audience. Mm -hmm. When I go to teach young children, mm -hmm. I will not use big philosophical terms in teaching them, yeah. but I'll help them even understand that God exists. Mm -hmm. And who is this God? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And my work in the infirmary, I've always brought hope, especially to our sisters, our mm -hmm. elderly sisters mm -hmm. at the infirmary. When I worked there, and I still go there for visits, mm -hmm. to help them understand their situation, mm -hmm. to help them accept their situation, and to move on and age gracefully. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Dr. Josephine. <laughs> a doctor in philosophy and there is a don't know whether it's a notion or what that philosophers once they nini, they have a lot of philosophy they don't want to hear anything about god can you demystify <laughs> that sister <laughs> let me tell you yeah where philosophy stops mm -hmm. theology begins okay and so mm -hmm. many people who think that once you become a philosopher, you do not know God. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church wouldn't have put philosophy to be taught to the seminarians before they do theology. Yes. And so philosophy helps to expand our reasoning. Mm -hmm. 
to be critical, yeah. not to just to accept things for the sake of accepting. Mm -hmm. So the arguments that are usually in philosophy does not make us become atheists. Mm -hmm. By the way, philosophers are great contemplators. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. Thank you for clarifying that. Now, there is somebody who is watching. Dear viewer, you are watching. You have admired what the sisters have said. You really feel like you would wish to be uh, one of them. Sister Margaret, what should one have to become an Asumbi sister? For one to be a Franciscan sister of St. Joseph, mm -hmm. you must be a Catholic, baptized, mm -hmm. and confirmed. Okay. You must have a certificate of, uh, of health mm -hmm. showing that you are physically fit mm -hmm. and mentally fit. Okay. You must have completed your Form 4 at least with a grade of C and above. Mm -hmm. And if you don't achieve that, you, for example, you have a C minus, mm -hmm. we encourage you to go for a diploma course mm -hmm. before you join us. Okay. Yes, and then the age bracket mm -hmm. from 18 to 28. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sister. Let me just add on that. Okay. You also must have uh, a right motive, mm -hmm. correct values, Thank and you. significant qualification, as she has just mentioned. Okay. But right motive is Very key. Very important. Yes. Thank you, sisters. There is, I, I understand, and as you said from the word go, your congregation was started in Kenya. And mm -hmm. there is maybe, because this is going on YouTube, somebody is watching us from out of Kenya. What, how can they join your congregation? And do you have uh, girls from out, outside Kenya who are, who are sisters, Asumbi sisters? We are hoping to be pontifical. Okay. And so we are open mm -hmm. because when we welcome girls from outside Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, that will help us to acquire these status mm -hmm. very fast. Okay. Already we have Tanzanians mm -hmm. within our congregation. We have girls from Uganda mm -hmm. in our congregation. Mm -hmm. Now we are even going to have a mission in Congo. Mm -hmm. And already we have a candidate from Congo mm -hmm. that would wish to join us. Okay. Yeah, we are open. What about the qualification? Is it the same or what do you tell them? Uh, the qualification, according to their standards of education, of course, we love to check. Mm. We love to check and compare that or uh, compare it with the Kenyan standards. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sister. Mm -hmm. Sister Josephine, when you are told that you are coming to the studio, Capchin TV, uh, maybe there is something you said. Uh, that one, I really need to tell the viewers, and I have not asked you, could you, this is your time now to, to say it, and if you do not have now, you have your closing remark. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to let the viewers know that um, Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph is a congregation that brings hope to all creation of God. Mm -hmm. I know when I say all creation of God, people will wonder how do I bring hope to the trees, to the whatever. Yeah. But St. Francis, our seraphic father, mm -hmm. is a father of all creation. Mm -hmm. To human beings, to non-human beings. Mm -hmm. And so, Franciscan sisters of St. Joseph, we bring hope to all creation of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, I forgot, maybe you can shout out the number or the website or wherever somebody can get you. Okay. Yeah. My telephone number is 0723660561. Thank you, Sister Josephine. Sister Margaret? I want to encourage our viewers that religious life is the best. Yeah. May I encourage the youth who are still discerning their vocation mm -hmm. that this is the best mm -hmm. choice that you would, you would make mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. And uh, Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph is one of the best congregations also. Mm -hmm. I have never regretted from mm -hmm. the time I joined up to now. Mm -hmm. I still say, I've now celebrated my 25 years, mm -hmm. and I say, if I'm taken back to my girlhood, I would still choose religious life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sister. If you can shout out a number or uh, for the vocation promoter or whoever. Yes, my number is 
0021-560-561. Thank you so much, sisters. Sister Dr. Josephine, allow me to use now the academic terms. And Sister Dr. In Making, Sister Margaret, <laughs> thank you very much for coming to be with us, to talk to the people of God, to give them hope. I know there is someone who was watching us and felt, ah, so that one happened to her, it can also happen to me. We have been here talking, conversing, and giving you hope. Not only the people we serve, but you people who watch us on Caption TV, we give you hope because we know once the world become hopeful, there is a tendency to change for good. Until next Tuesday, it has been Missions of Hope with thy sister Esther Moturi. And in the studio, I was with Sister Josephine and Sister Margaret from the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph. It's bye for now. God bless you. Capuchin TV. And forward ever, backward 